Kong. You can start. Hi. Hey, Hi. Kate. <laughs> Tell me a bit about growing up in West London and having a family that was enthusiastic about art. Well, growing up in West London was interesting. It's very loud. It's very busy. And any time that I go out of London, you know, to the countryside, I'm just like, this isn't for me. I need to be around, like, hustle, bustle. Um, and I, I grew up there, I've lived there my whole life, never moved. I wear West London around my neck, I rub it till I die. <laughs> and um, my family, yeah, they're, they're all in the arts. They're all um, very supportive of me and my brother, who are both in music. Uh, my dad is a comedian and an impressionist. And my mum was a dancer and a singer. My dad's an incredible singer as well. So my family's, we're like the Von Trapps. We're always singing around the house. There's always music playing. My brother was used to live at home and he made you know, all of his music upstairs in the bedroom and then I'm singing in my bedroom. So it really helps to have a family that are involved in it because they get it and they understand what I do. And they're really so supportive. So it's great. Fantastic. Before you decided to follow a musical path, you were interested in being an actress. What made you want to change artistic direction? I don't think I ever changed it. I kind of loved both and thought you need to pick one because both trying both is just not going to work because they're just such difficult, you know, so difficult to be an actress, it's so difficult to be a singer. So I went to a drama school and I loved drama. I loved acting. I loved doing what my dad does, which is impressions and doing voices and accents. Um, I, I, it wasn't that I changed my mind, I just preferred singing a tiny bit more. So I kind of went that way and then hopefully when I've become a superstar I'll um, do acting as well, because I feel like they go hand in hand quite nicely. Okay. So having collaborated with artists like Matoma and Sean Paul, how would you describe your sound to someone who has never heard it before? Well, my sound is nothing like the song I did with Matoma and Sean Paul, but um, my sound is like, I would say, and it's giving bad bitch energy R&B. Can I swear? Okay. Um, yeah, it's like a bit, you know, a bit more hard, less like soft, and it's a little bit more in your face, and a bit more kind of like, that's how I would describe it, gun fingers. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, you have a brand new EP, you have to be there, coming up soon. What can we expect from it? I mean, it, it took me a really long time to find my sound, like what, it, what my sound was. I've been through a lot of ups and downs and a very long journey from trying to find it. But this is the first EP that actually sounds like me. Like it really does sound like me. It sounds like... If you know me, you know that that music sounds like who I am. It's like, as I said, a little bit more hard, a little bit more in your face. But even though the EP is very cohesive, there's like a lot of moods on it. There's like a song for every mood. There's like one that's a bit more dancey, one that's a ballad, one that's really pop, one that's really big, one that's really R&B and soft. So I have kind of journeyed through a lot of different things on this EP. I'm speaking about real shit that's really happened, you know? <laughs> the lead single off of it, titled Hate You, reintroduces you as an artist and showcases the power women hold. While holding a name that sounds of hatred, it's actually all about self-love and women's empowerment. Mm -hmm. What makes the choice to lead with this? Um, I don't know if there was a specific choice to be like, this is going to be the first single because it's about that. It was mainly just my favourite song, personally. Um, I saw the video really clearly in my head and I knew that I wanted to lead with a video that was quite hard hitting, like the one that we shot. And uh, it was a good reintroduction because it was, again, it was quite R&B, quite silky, more like the other one, so mm -hmm. I didn't jump straight to like a pop song or whatever. Um, and it was just a good reintroduction with the video and it was, you know, it just kind of felt right. I don't know. We, I made it with um, a producer called Swag who has become a very close collaborator of mine and we just decided that that was the best one to leave with. Mm. Your most recent single, Numb, also showcases your ability to be paradoxical. A song about heartbreak that sounds like something you could dance to in a club. 
what decisions go into your song making process when it comes to your vibe want animated um well i don't tend to put too much pressure when i'm in the studio if i'm not feeling it i'm not feeling the song I'll just leave, to be honest. <laughs> and uh, when we wrote Numb, again, with Swag, who produced Hate You, it was me and him in the studio. We were in New York, and um, it was just a super quick, like, he just started playing chords, and I vibed to that, and then we thought of some melodies, and then thought of that kind of concept. I guess I was, I wasn't in the mindset of what I was writing about in that time, but I have very much felt like that in the past, so I just, kind of pulled emotions from how I felt in the past and we just kind of vibed to some melodies and just wrote the song. But Swag was behind the production and making it feel kind of mm -hmm. how it does, so big up into that one. <laughs> Sweet. So what artists excite you at the moment and who would your dream be to hop on a track with? There's so many people, so many people, I couldn't even... But last night, actually, I watched um, the Jake Collier documentary and it pro it's probably one of the best things I've ever seen. He's like the m most talented person on this planet. So because I watched it last night and I'm inspired by him today, Jake Collier. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Thank you.